Well, welcome everyone for those who are joining us um, live here today on our webinar um, and for those who may be watching and digesting later on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we've got a lot to cover in, in our time today. So what we will be talking about um, during this, uh, this episode of our Inspire series is mapping the customer experience in the COVID-19 age. Um, so just take a quick moment, um, let us know if, um, for those who are joining, um, type your name and organization in the chat box um, so we can um, say hey to you as we get started. So I'll leave just a moment for us to do that as we jump in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So um, when we think about um, mapping the customer experience in the COVID age, well, we've got a couple of things that we want to talk to you um, talk to you all about um, during our time here. So when we think about our agenda, one of the thing, big things we want to focus in on primarily is to understand these new shifts for our customers. Um, then we're going to spend a little bit of time unpacking some of the components that we see in a journey map, kind of the process that we like to go forward as we build out um, a journey map. And then we're actually going to spend some time applying um, to try and address a relevant COVID-19 challenge. So a lot of things to cover in a short amount of time. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do is if you guys uh, would like to use the chat feature in Zoom, uh, we want to pose this question to those who are joining in. What processes uh, or what process have changed uh, significantly for you due to COVID-19? Anything that's uh, it's changed things that look different or feel different from the way that they used to. So um, just take a moment to use the chat feature to let us know some of the things that are uh, changing for you. All right, so I'm seeing working at home using multiple uh, video conferencing platforms relying on technology to stay informed. Yes, Mary and I were actually just talking a little while ago where it feels like we just have meetings that run into each other and we're um, can barely have a break. So definitely things that shift um, as we are kind of glued to the screen throughout our day here. Uh, so when we think about a customer journey map, what we wanted to do is really start off and present some samples, some ideas of if you haven't had a chance to really see what a journey map might look like to be able to give um, some different uh, representations of that. So what you see on the screen here, this is what we would consider more of an advanced journey map sample. So there's quite a lot going on this screen. We're looking at different phases, the goals that are in there, the steps, the touch points, the different metrics that are being measured in each of these actions, as well as the persona. There's a lot of content in here. And so in, when we think about getting started, we, we sometimes like to think more on maybe a more simplified uh, journey map example. So when we think about other ways or a more simple way to represent a journey map, we might see something like, uh, like this next slide here. So this map here still represents kind of the customer, the individual who uh, we are trying to understand and map out their journey. It still has the stages represented and the action, some of the touch points that are in there. Um, but we do see that uh, there's not as much of the, uh, the wealth of content that was in the previous journey map. Um, so when we think about We've had a chance to see some examples or some samples of maybe a more advanced journey map and more, a more simplified one as well. So maybe the next question that we'd want to ask ourselves is why would we use a journey map? You know, we have these different options, these different approaches. Uh, one of the things that we think about when using a journey map is really this idea here that the customer is at the center. You know, a lot of our work is focused in on human centered design and building empathy for our customers and our users. So in the same way, when we're doing a journey map, the customer has to be at the center of this. It really helps us to focus in on the desirability, the things that are really important to them, what they value, and more specifically, identifying some of those pain points. So a customer journey map allows us to quickly visualize those touch points that challenge and, and impact how the user feels. Additionally, it also allows us to really drive forward some innovation opportunities and some strategies as well. So we can start to surface some of those unmet or maybe underserved portions of the user experience. 
And the last one in here is it allows us to really establish market uh, position and growth. So sometimes there are areas uh, that may be uh, weak spots in our journey. Sometimes even some of our strong spots in our journey can help us to identify and really differentiate ourselves in the market. So all of these examples uh, here would be ways for us to be able to, um, to use a journey map, things that we would consider. So now when we think about the reasons to use that, we, we know one of the big things that is affecting all of this is, are the new shifts, the things that are, that are driving us. So we asked you guys at the beginning to, to share some of those things, those sentiments that you might be feeling, the um, processes that are changing along the way. So some of the sentiments that our customers may be feeling would be things like, if I can do it virtually, I will, or you know, safety and security have risen to the top of my priorities. Another one that we're seeing a lot is, will I receive the same value and experience that I've come to expect from before? This is definitely something that we see across the board, whether it's virtual learning, whether it's buying something, how do I, how do I buy a car when I can't test drive it before I can't meet the, the people who are there or look at the different options. So what can we do to kind of respond to all of these thoughts, these feelings um, as we go forward? One of the, the first steps in our customer journey map would be to start to consider our personas. So I mentioned before customers are at the center of our journey map. So a persona is really just a character representation of our customer. And we can have lots of different personas, lots of different um, ways to represent our customers as we go through. And really it helps us to get in our customers' shoes um, and think and identify what would, you know, so-and-so think about this while we're mapping. You see all of these different representations here on this image are talking about identifying things that uh, our customer thinks, they say, they feel, they do. All of these represent and help us understand that customer. And sometimes we use a tool called a, an empathy map to really start to develop that persona so we can get a perspective of the full individual that's there. So when we think about who are the key personas, these are some questions that you might want to ask yourself as you're considering what are, um, what are the types of individuals that are part of my business. So you might be considering questions like this, who are your major customers today? Or more specifically, who represents your growth, greatest growth potential? These are the types of questions that help us to really say, how can we focus in on maybe uh, one, two, or three customer personas that we really want to understand better and then translate that into a really um, powerful experience for them as well. So I mentioned earlier about an empathy map. This is really a tool for us to be able to, to take that, uh, that persona, that uh, representation of our customer and start to ask some, some more detailed questions about things that they say, they think, they feel, and what they do. And so these are the types of questions that we might be asking for each of these areas. What have we heard from them saying? So it's really important to interact with your customers to get to their perspective because we, we know our cu customers from the experience that we have, but there's also value for us to, to get them to share some of their experiences to be able to build this out. Uh, you'll also see things like what do they want to accomplish? What motivates their behavior? Uh, what decisions do they make? And what have we observed them doing? So typically when we see building out a persona, there are things that are more overt, the things that they say and that they do that we can observe from the outside perspective that we can pull in. But there's also things like the things that they think and what they feel. And those, uh, those types or, or portions of our persona are not necessarily some things that we can just observe right off, uh, right off the bat from interacting. So it'll, these are areas that we may want to dig a little bit deeper. And oftentimes we find that what people say and do don't always line up with what they think and feel. So that's why it's really important for us to get, not just at the actions of what they're doing, but get to the heart of um, what, they're, um, what drives uh, their values and um, also affects their pain points as well. So when we think about, um, I mentioned we we're gonna be doing a little bit of a a test drive and an exploration here. What I wanted to do is present you with a persona that we're going to be exploring during our short time together. Um, so I want you to meet Ethel. So um, Ethel, you know, she's an older customer. She she spends a lot of time browsing at the store. You know, we're thinking about this uh, 
from the perspective of, of a shopping experience. So we think about maybe going to the grocery store and buying. So when she goes to the store, she loves to socialize with her friends, but she's not really a big fan of technology and is oftentimes overwhelmed with the options that digital provides. Uh, she values close relationships and, um, and particularly with her family, but her family lives in another state. So it's, it's been really difficult, especially now as things have changed for her to be able to interact with them. She can't get the same support. Uh, and we also see that she, uh, she has tried a couple of different shopping options, different ways to be able to buy things, but sometimes struggle to uh, get exactly what she wants, when she wants it, and to really maintain the level of interaction. So this is just kind of a brief sort of overview to kind of set the stage for, uh, for our persona that we are going to be taking a look at. So what I want to invite us to do is actually show a tool that we like to use when we uh, when we're building out specifically our empathy map, but you'll also see that we'll we'll revisit this later on. So I'm going to actually ask Mary who's uh, to switch us over to Miro. Miro is a um, a platform that um, that allows us to work collaboratively with each other uh, at the same time. So Mary's got this up on the screen here and I can also come in here as well. You'll see the persona that we've represented. This helps to kind of level set us in the work that we're doing. Uh, but more specifically, what I want us to take a look at is the empathy map here. We've populated some of these things and as Mary zooms in, you can see that there's, uh, there's some content that's already here. But in the introduction of our persona of Ethel, I wanted to open up the chat and see if you guys had any thoughts of things, additional things that Ethel might be feeling as a uh, sort of older customer trying to uh, do her grocery shopping um, and what that looks like. Um, so a couple of options for you to think about as you post in the chat here is what would be things that Ethel is, is thinking in this situation where she needs to get her groceries um, but it's, a, it's become a little bit more difficult for her to do that. Um, one of the things that we have already put in here is all this technology is confusing uh, to get working properly. So there's a lot of different working uh, parts to be able to get that technology there. Um, so I'm gonna invite you guys, what, what things do you think that, uh, that Ethel might be thinking in, in this situation as she's trying to buy groceries um, but having a little bit of difficulty along the way. She's afraid that she'll go hungry. Yeah, so that's a great thing. She's thinking, if I can't get this to work, what happens? Um, definitely. Scared and frustrated. Yeah, so this really fits into another category here of um, what they feel, right? So they're scared and frustrated because they can't get a remote shopper to, to interact with them well. I know like Instacart has a lot of communication back and forth with, uh, with the shopper who's going in there, but that's something that's really important. Afraid she will lose her friendships. Yes, that's a huge thing when we think about this individual here with Ethel and the challenges that she, those things that she valued, right? She enjoys getting to spend time with our friends and see and interact with each other. Uh, but now that interaction is no longer there. So what can she do um, to be able to do that? Instacart is not available in all areas, right? So um, some of the things that she says, I can't get Instacart to, to help me in um, to get my groceries. It doesn't, doesn't serve me. I have a limited budget, right? So these are the things I don't have enough money to get all the things that I need and paying for all these service fees and these subscriptions are just making it that much more difficult for me to do that. Yes, she feels some low self-esteem, right? Because she can't figure it all out as she's going through. These are really great uh, things for us to consider. So you can see in just a short amount of time, we're already seeing this, this map populate here, feelings of being alone, like all of these different uh, different sentiments help us to understand uh, our customer more, more deeply. I was able to provide you a, a general description of, of our persona, but you guys have already been able to add all of these different representations, these different sentiments of our customer. And this helps us to understand them even more deeply as we uh, try and build out and map out the customer experience for them. So 
I'm actually going to ask Mary to take us back to uh, to our slides real quick. We have all of these uh, post-its that have populated on Miro, so you can see that in just a short amount of time, lots of information there. So if we were to make our way, once we've built out our empathy empathy map, the next activity for us is to build out the customer journey. What what does that look like for our persona that we've started to understand? So we want to be thinking about, primarily, we like to start out with the customer stages. So thinking about what are, what are the sort of broad sequences of this journey? So sometimes it's really, uh, really easy for us to be able to start from that perspective, that broad level of those stages to really help us understand and to start exploring uh, into more detail. So we kind of start broad and then work our way into the detail that's there. So for us, what we're doing when we're thinking about understanding the shopping experience, the grocery shopping experience for, uh, for Ethel, our, um, our older customer who values interaction, we're going we're gonna to use these stages here of before, during, and after. But there are lots of different stages that you can go. You can kind of play with the that fit your particular uh, your particular challenge that you have in there. So another thing, once we've started to really identify the customer stages, the next piece that we want to be looking into are really to understand the other parts of our journey map. So when we when we think about the other parts of our journey map here there's really three areas that we're gonna try and focus in on. This really helps us to, um, to get a good grasp of our customer's journey. So the first one here is simply the actions. What is our customer doing in each of those stages? It helps us to really kind of sequence that out and be able to see what happens next and what happens next and really work our way through that and have that sequence. The other element in here that's really important for us is to try and map out what is your customer feeling. Uh, so we're going to be using just a five point scale plus, um, plus two minus two range for us to be able to see how in these particular actions is our customer feeling. And we'll see how that plays out as we go forward. The last one that we may not have an opportunity to get to in our time is the opportunity. So this is where we start to see areas for improvement based on what the customer is doing or feeling. So this next slide here is just an example of that process as we work through from stages to actions. And we see kind of this expanding direction as we go through. So when we think about testing and really applying journey maps into the example that we have and exploring with Ethel, we'll see that it's important for us to start with a central point of our service. So when we look at this next slide here, um, and start to think about the grocery shopping experience for our senior. Uh, the first thing that we'd wanna do in any journey mapping process is to examine the stages which uh, give the map an outline, right? We've already identified we're gonna look at before, during, and after. And each of, those, um, each of those stages consist of a sequence of actions. So we're gonna be looking at those actions and trying to think about what would be some of the things that would happen along the way. And the last thing that we're gonna do to show you is how we can illustrate the persona's satisfaction on each step based on a five point scale here. Some questions for us to consider as we're building out a map, as it continues to grow, and you'll see that develop here, is always asking the question, is the beginning really the beginning of our journey? And is the end really the end of our journey? These are things that help us to think about where we can go forward. And of course, did I miss anything in between? These helps us to really draw out some of those questions. So with that, let's head over to Amira to practice, uh, practice our map. It'll give us a chance to uh, kind of explore and dig into the grocery shopping experience for our elderly persona here. And you see Mary is showing us the customer journey map from a um, broad, wide view so we can see all three of the different stages. You'll see the actions that we've populated. We're going to take a look at these and spend our time there. And then you'll also see the satisfaction. This helps us to map out plus or minus how is the customer feeling at each of these moments here. So what we'll be doing is Mary will zoom in into the uh, before section of this customer journey map here. And I'm gonna invite you guys to again, use the chat feature and think about what might be the first sort of action in this process of someone buying, um, going and buying groceries 
from, uh, uh, from the store. So uh, let's spend a little bit of time thinking about what might be the first sort of action, maybe the discovery or the recognition that I need, um, I need some groceries. I go to um, buy some cookies and, or make some cookies and I need, uh, I need to build out my grocery store. So we see riding a shopping list, we see driving to the store. These are all things that are happening before I get to the shopping experience. And remember, we're thinking about this in the context of where we are right now, sort of in the age of COVID. So those are gonna be things that we can map out once we get to sort of the, during the shopping experience, maybe while she's at the grocery store. Yes, suit up, gloves, mask, hand sanitizer, getting all the things that we need to be able to be ready uh, for, um, for our trip. So I'm going to add another one in here of um, deciding to uh, make something. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually move that over. We'll get that to represent over here. And you see that in real time, we're able to move these items here. We see call ahead, right? So I'm, I want to make sure that, um, that this is a good time for me. I know some grocery stores, uh, yeah, to make sure they're not too busy. Some grocery stores are offering, offering um, early hours or dedicated hours for seniors um, to uh, be able to check in. I know one of the things that we've, we've heard from this situation as well is some um, individuals who might in fit into our Ethel persona might not want to go during that time because that's when all of the uh, sort of higher risk individuals are all congregating in one space. So that would be something that she might be considering as she going, she's going through and deciding to go to the store. All right, so we have five different items here for the before. So let's think, um, you know, after the drive to the store, she arrives at the store. So Mary, let's move into the during stage here where we take a look at what, what are the things that happen during once she's, um, uh, once she is in, um, in the store and wanting to buy, what are some of the things that she might be experiencing in here? So I invite you guys to use the chat again. Let us know what do you think might be things that are happening during this. She grabs a cart, of course. Um, and, you know, hopefully the cart has been sanitized or she might have uh, used her hand sanitizer that she had. Cart, uh, wipe cart down. That's great. Picks an area to shop first. Yeah, so one of the things that we're seeing too are the one-way activities, right? So the, um, the, the pathways that some grocery stores are making to be able to direct us and go in one direction and kind of cycle through this, um, the grocery store in one path. And avoid the people, of course, yeah. Cue to get in, right? So what if, what if there's a line to get in? Maybe that's something that we, uh, we need to put at the uh, before. She has to wait outside to be able to get into the store. All right, and of course she's she's making sure everything has been applied properly. She's got all her protection and she starts selecting her items. And let's say that she has identified all of the items in her list um, and she's going, uh, she's careful about what she's touched. So all of these things help us to be able to say she's got the, the item that she went to the store um, to, uh, to make, make her, uh, her cookies that she wanted to at the beginning. And so now as she's gone through and she's selected an item, what are the things that we think about after? So we'll use this during as not just during at the grocery store, but also as um, during our time going and selecting that product. So we see all the different activities, the actions that are going on as she's going through and she's selected uh, that item. Maybe if she needed some flour to be able to go through and she ran out. Um, she's going to the cash register. You see that um, identifying here. We were talking about earlier, how do I do um, the um, cash register experience, the self checkout when I have to touch screens. Do I do I go through the self checkout or do I? Uh, yes, how to pay without touching. So uh, we're seeing a, 
you know, response in the chat here. These are things that are already thinking about opportunities. Should I cash? Some, some, uh, grocery, uh, some restaurants are trying to shift to all cashless to eliminate that extra touch. Um, so these would be things that we would start to then kind of populate into some opportunities for us of how do we incorporate cashless, cashless or uh, pay without touching components to our, um, to our design, right? So we see all of these things starting to play out that help us. Mary, I was wondering in the remaining time that we have, we can maybe take a look at our uh, customer satisfaction. So when we think about uh, going back to Ethel's thoughts as she's going through and thinking about where, uh, where might she be on each of these um, levels on her satisfaction, right? So she's, she's decided she wants to make some cookies. She's probably pretty excited. She's ready. She wants to make something, but she has that recognition of, oh, I need to, I need to get some stuff from the grocery store. So we might move her um, satisfaction on the first step here. We might put that up maybe in the, uh, between the plus two, um, plus two, something like that, or plus one. We might put that up a little bit because she's pretty excited about being able to do that. But now it's gone down a little bit because she has to, uh, she has to go to the grocery store and that's not something that she enjoyed. Um, and she's going through and she calls ahead to make sure the, uh, the grocery store is not busy, she finds out, yep, we're good, it's good to go. So she's probably staying pretty neutral in this moment. Maybe she's, she's bumped up a little bit. Um, but when we think about um, the drive to the store, right? She's, pro she's probably going through those thoughts of, you know, if I, if I knew how to use my technology better, maybe I could be not having to drive to the store. So her, her satisfaction may, um, may decline here as she's driving to the store and making our way down. So I'll pull, um, pull that one down here for us. And so we see in, in just a little bit of time, even just in the before on the shopping experience, we find some different opportunities here starting to surface for us on how um, to be able to focus our time on, you know, there's an opportunity here to really dig into getting around someone's excitement about being able to identify something that they need to get ready. Maybe there's an opportunity to connect uh, your recipes into your uh, shopping experience, your mobile shopping experience, or ways to be able to reduce fear um, or concern as you're getting ready to go to the store and eliminate those touch points there. So I know we, there's so much more in this map to be able to cover um, that we don't even have time for in the time that we have today. Um, but I want us to go ahead and uh, shift back over to the slides, Mary, as we kind of wrap up. We've had a chance to be able to unpack a little bit, see how we can use a tool to be able to build out a, uh, a customer and journey map. And I do want to spend the remaining time that we have to open up to any questions that you might have, some areas that we, uh, we went through really quickly that you want us to kind of re, uh, readdress as we finish up. Any, any questions that you can have, you can post that in the, the chat here. Um, to let us know any things that you're thinking about uh, that you'd like to ask us before we wrap up in our time today. Now, one of the things that we didn't get a um, didn't get an opportunity to address that we mentioned in our um, our steps for our journey map are the opportunities. We we talked about that a little bit, but that would be another sort of layer to this map that we would dig into um, to start to take those uh, those positives or those negatives and start to brainstorm about what potential opportunities could we do. That really ties us back into the beginning on why would we use a journey map? This, this process here in just less than 15 minutes, we already started to identify maybe some potential opportunities and directions that either an individual or a um, grocery store uh, could be introducing to be able to help their, um, their customers. Yeah, so I see a question, will there be a recording of this available? Yes, so if you registered for this webinar, any of you guys who have attended, we will send out a recording, so you'll be able to do that. Um, I'll go ahead, um, and um, so that way you can continue to um, view this later on. When you think about doing a customer journey map for a digital ex uh, experience with e-commerce, one of the other things that you might want to introduce into this process is to start thinking about what are the existing uh, resources or touch points
are available. So in those actions that are going on, those different steps that are happening, what would be the, um, the different um, modes of interaction that they might be um, inter going through? Are they connecting on mobile? Do you need to send an email to them? Like, how does that connect in? So you want to be able to uh, start to unpack some of the additional layers in here. We looked at the, the customer uh, perspective and those actions, the things that they were doing as they were walking through. Um, but as you kind of dig deeper into the map, you'd want to start to think about what are, what are the actions that you as a, as a business are starting to consider? And then what are the supporting services and processes that need to help build up and make that a reality? So that's, that's the kind of delving into the more advanced journey maps as you go through and you start to transition really into uh, what you might refer to as a service blueprint to really see all of the different um, activities and swim lanes that are coming through for, um, for that particular experience. So thank you again for everyone who's joined. We uh, hope you got something valuable out of this webinar and uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day and weekend.